Hello guys, I have a plan. A few months ago, I reviewed The Creature from the Black Lagoon and its two sequels, and many of you enjoyed that, so I thought it'd be fun to do a few more Universal Monster videos. So today, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about 1941's The Wolfman. The Wolfman stars Lon Chaney Jr. as Lawrence or Larry Talbot, second son of an important English landowner, Sir John Talbot, played by Claude Rains. Larry has dutifully returned home from America to assume the mantle of responsibility as his father's heir after his elder brother is killed in a hunting accident. The provincial village is different from what Larry's used to, but he's optimistic about settling in, especially when a pretty girl in town catches his eye. She and a friend agree to go out with him for the evening, and they stop to visit a gypsy camp. When the friend is attacked by a wolf, Larry tries to save her and kills the wolf, but not before it bites him. It's not long after that that Larry begins to fear the bite has turned him into a werewolf. This movie, like so many of the universal horror classics, has oodles of atmosphere. I've never seen an old movie that reveled in perpetual swirling fog like this one does. The setting is amazing too. Spooky woods, a huge castle, a vaguely European village that looks like part of a Frankenstein or Dracula movie set. It makes it hard to remember that this is supposed to be England, and of course the area is plagued with legends and superstitions, and all the locals are well versed in lycanthropic lore, as they demonstrate several times. Even a man who is pure in heart, and so his prayers by night, they become a wolf when the wolfbane blooms. And the autumn moon is bright. So you know that one too, huh? <laughs> of course. <laughs> The Wolfman also has what I consider an impressive supporting cast for a little horror picture. Lon Chaney Jr. is supported not just by Claude Rains, but by Evelyn Ankers, Maria Uspenskaya, I love Maria Uspenskaya, Ralph Bellamy, Patrick Knowles, Warren William, and as Bella the Gypsy, Bella Lugosi. Lugosi's role is so brief, it's practically a cameo, but it's very important, and effective. This isn't the suave Lugosi of Dracula, but a desperate, tortured one, foreshadowing Larry's own sad future. Apparently the part of Larry Talbot was originally written for Boris Karloff, and then Bela Lugosi actively campaigned for it. But it went to Lon Chaney Jr., and I think he was just the right choice for Larry Talbot. He's a robust, enthusiastic man, friendly and likable, also pretty smooth when it comes to his pursuit of Evelyn Anker's Gwen. Even though she's already got a boyfriend and she's put off by his slightly creepy hints about first seeing her through his telescope, Larry won't give up. And because he's so stinkin' charming, she can't resist him. But then there's this freak accident with the wolf, and his entire life is destroyed as, against his will, he transforms at night into a bloodthirsty werewolf who goes on the hunt for unsuspecting victims. The transformation special effects are very creative, and the werewolf makeup, by Universal's makeup mastermind Jack Pierce, still holds up. When I was a kid, we frequently watched Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein, which came out in 1948, and again features Chaney as the Wolfman, and it was always his scenes where he transformed that freaked me out the most. Chaney's face practically disappears under the hair and prosthetics. It's such a thorough and convincing makeup job that I almost forget it's actually him under there. I also think it's interesting in this movie how a werewolf exists in a vague, inconsistent halfway point between beast and man, springing and snarling and walking on its toes, but also walking upright and wearing clothing. But the transformation of Larry Talbot is both physical and emotional, as he starts to wonder what's happening to him and becomes fearful and hopeless about his future. This movie touches on some dark areas of desperation and self-loathing, tragic themes that would be further explored in the sequels. Oh yes, there are sequels! Lon Chaney Jr. played the character five times, and I'll be getting to those sequels in a future video. Actually, in my mind, there are two tragic figures in this story. One is Larry, the other is his father, Sir John. Here is a man whose eldest son has just died in a hunting accident. His second son returns, but it's been 18 years since they've seen each other. Things are awkward. 
Still, Sir John is bent on welcoming his son back with open arms and rebuilding their relationship. Then, soon after Larry's arrival, all these crazy werewolf things start happening, and Sir John fears his son is either insane or fallen under hypnotic influences. Both these possibilities are unacceptable to logical Sir John, who stubbornly refuses to believe anything Larry tells him. It's only when he's confronted with irrefutable proof that Sir John will admit the truth, and it's in that heartbreaking moment of realization that Claude Rains shines. As always, Rains is wonderful, and though I admit their physical differences make it hard for me to believe that Lon Chaney Jr. is really Claude Rains' son, I wouldn't have Sir John played by anyone else. I do also consider Lon Chaney Jr. himself a real-life tragic figure. Born Creighton Cheney, he had a troubled personal life and struggled between wanting to separate himself from his famous father's image and wanting to follow in his footsteps. When I saw Cheney's performance opposite Burgess Meredith in the 1939 version of Of Mice and Men, which is an excellent movie by the way, I saw dramatic potential. Unfortunately, like so many of his fellows, Cheney spent most of his career being typecast in the horror genre playing parts that were often small and unappealing. But his Wolfman performance has always been well-liked, and it's worth noting that he's the only actor in the Universal Monster heyday who played the character. He likewise has the distinction of being the only actor to also play Frankenstein's monster, the son of Dracula, and the mummy. But he'll always be first and foremost Larry Talbot whose hunger for release from the werewolf curse made him such a memorable figure. I should mention that there was an earlier Universal Werewolf movie, 1935's Werewolf of London, which is included on the Universal Monsters Legacy Collection box set. It's an interesting movie, a completely different story with its own take on werewolf mythology. But it's this 1941 film, with its thick atmosphere and inventive folklore, that put werewolves on the pop culture map. And for many, Lon Chaney's Wolfman is still the first image that comes to mind when they hear the word werewolf. Thanks for watching!